Okay, so we're back at our club admin page and we've successfully set up our first tournament, but you'll remember that I left it in setup mode, not in active mode, so it says I have no upcoming tournaments. As soon as I switch that shoot to active mode, then you will see whichever shoot is coming up first next for you in this featured area. Down below here, you're going to get a list of all of your tournaments. Right now we're looking at a view of all tournaments. You can toggle this to only view those shoots that are still in setup, active, or scores final. This shoot right now um, is in setup mode, but we're going to go ahead and I want to show you, so I'm going to edit this and change this to active. We're going to update the tournament, and now you'll see that any details related to that tournament are featured in the main area here of your club admin page and toggled the event status back to in setup and you'll see why here in just a second when we start setting up events but now I'm going to go into the details for the shoot and start setting up an event so I'll start right here with create an event we're going to do main event on this one and we're going to leave the status as active again you have all three status available to you to choose um, on the event level so as long as I leave this one inactive but the overall tournament in setup mode it won't show up until I'm done setting everything up, but this way I don't have to go back and hide or mark as final some of these events this time. So the main event is 200 targets. I've actually filled out some of this already, so I'm just going to switch here. I've got the main event and active, 200 targets. Again, you have event notes, um, description or anything related that the shooters might need to know. This is a sporting event, and we're going to switch this to a standard register. NSTA is four cents right now, and the state of Nevada where this regional is happening is actually three cents per target. You'll get a left-hand navigation in this slip as well. So we're going to click over to registration now, and we're going to talk about the entry fees. Let's say this is a $200 event, and it already includes the target fees. So you don't have to do the math to subtract out whatever the target fees are for that event. You can also indicate that this does include sales tax or that you will be adding sales tax at the event. Early admission would be uh, if you're offering a discount to any shooters that register before a certain date, which we define here. Deposits, minimum deposit on an event level, it's not on a tournament level in Score Chaser. When the deposit refund deadline is, meaning they have to cancel prior to this date in order to receive a refund of this deposit. And a cancellation fee, if you choose to um, keep a fee out of their deposit due to you know your work your staff processing their entry you can allow concurrent only registration meaning that they do not show up in class they only show up in their concurrent category you can decide if you're going to allow online registration or if all of the registration for this one particular event within the tournament will be happening on site you allow shooters the opportunity to pay in full online so you do not have to collect anything on site or require that they pay in full online so we're just going to leave this one as is, and then we'll go over to our courses and stations. So the first course, I'm going to name the red course. You're going to shoot 100 targets on that course. 180 minutes to shoot that. I'm just going to say it has 10 stations. We'll hit update here. And each station has 10 targets. You can come back later and define your menu, which we'll talk about in a different video. Right now I'm just trying to get a general setup done so that we can allow for registrations to begin. So the next course will be blue, 180 minutes, 10 stations, which determines really how many squads you're allowing. And then we're gonna go into tiebreaker sequences. So a score chaser, you can very easily click between all the courses related to that event or unclick them if you don't like that order. And then, your tiebreaker sequence is defined. We'll go into rotation and times. This is a squatted event. They should be able to start on either course, meaning I'm gonna allow them to uh, start on red and blue simultaneously. The overall squad size, we're gonna have five shooters per squad and allowing B squads. I do wanna allow B squads for this main event. Events that you may not allow B squads are if you're really trying to limit the max capacity on a course or five C and task, you're not gonna have a B squad. So for the number of rotations, we're just going to say, I'm gonna have two different rotations and I can take 90 on each course. So a total of 180 persons per time. They're gonna shoot the first course at 9 a.m. Saturday. 
and our next start time would be 12 p.m. Saturday. If they started at 9 o'clock a.m. on Saturday, they're going to start at 9 p.m. on 12 p.m. on Sunday, excuse me. And if they shot at 12 p.m. on Saturday, 9 a.m. on Sunday. Words. This is in the left-hand navigation of the slip for this event. We're going to look at the overall, which has to do with all classes, because this is a registered event. You can choose what you would like to award out of class. So high overall, runner-up overall, that's not in class, whether or not you want them to shoot off. And then you have a spot here to enter a guaranteed payout if your payout type is a guaranteed purse. You can also offer a back-to-class fixed or a back-to-class variable. This uh, fix means that you're going to pay the same number of places in each class, no matter how many entrants are in the class, versus a back-to-class variable where you would pay one spot if there are one to five shooters, two spots if there were six to ten, and three spots if there were eleven or more shooters in the class. You simply leave the last box blank, indicating that um, your max range has been met. So for this one, I want to offer a trophy for first, second, and third in each class, and I want to shoot off for first only. You'd then go into each concurrent category and choose which places you'll be awarding and which places you would shoot off, and offer a guaranteed payout if you are to your concurrence. All right, so now we're going to take a look at options. The first option I've added here is the HOA option. I want to charge $50 to enter this. I'm going to allow shooters to register for this online. The option type will be based on raw scores, so we select HOA raw. We're going to let any age concurrent and all genders register for this HOA option, but you really could limit it down to sub-junior ladies if you wanted to do a special option just for them. You can do a fixed payout on an HOA option or a variable payout based on the number of entrants that played the option. This one will do a fixed. I'm going to say all $50 of their entry fee is going to get paid back out to shooters, and I only want it to pay one spot every time, no matter how many shooters there are. You can choose whether you want this to uh, be based on their total score for the event or a single round, and you determine which course that is. So if you had a high overall on the red course, you would set up a second option for a high overall on the blue course. This one's going to be on total score. We'll add a Lewis option here just to give you an example of what that would look like. I'm going to say this is a $20 Lewis. I'm going to switch it to Lewis here. All $20 of that entry fee is going to pay back out to shooters. You can select team scoring, so if you had a non-registered event, you would set up a Lewis based on teams in order to get your teams paired up and scored. And then I've given you a couple of automatic scales based on how I currently pay out at my tournaments, either a $20 option or a $10 option. Or you can set up your own manual scale where you determine the number of places you want to pay based on the number of entrants. For this one, we'll just stick to the $20 scale provided. And now that I've gone through all of the tabs in the left-hand navigation, I'm just going to hit Create Event. And then this is going to update my overall tournament. And I'm going to see on this visual representation again that main event is available on Saturday and Sunday. And it gives me the starting, the starting time for each one of the rotations that I set, set up in the event setup. The first event here, you'll see it in the tournament overview. But if you're looking to edit your individual event, You'll find it in a list of your events towards the bottom of your tournament overview page where you can edit or just view the details. But also in the left-hand navigation, the second left-hand nav, you're going to find events and you get an overall view of your events in the tournament. You can choose to edit here. You can go straight into entering scores for this event. We'll add another event by just clicking the little plus sign there. We'll do the prelim. We'll say it's active, 100 targets, and let's say it's $100. And right now, I don't want to set up rotations, courses, awards, any of that information because maybe I haven't made up my mind about it or maybe I just have another job to get to and I'm distracted. So I'll just hit Create Event here. Score Chaser allows you to partially set up an event so that you can come back to it later and finish it. So I went ahead and set up a few events partially incomplete because I wanted to show you another feature that allows you to change the order of your events. So let's say I wanted prelim to show at the top of the list. These arrows here next to your um, event name, you select that event and then you can hop them down or up. 